and welcome to Finextra. I'm Hannah Wallace and with me now is Brian Charlick, Principal Consultant at CGI and we're going to be discussing the role of compliance as banks move to SaaS models. Hello Brian, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. No problem at all, thank you. So firstly, how do you see the market adapting um, after having to take on such a large non-core activity? Right, um, regulatory reporting in particular is one of the key non-core activities that banks are having to do, uh, perform, certainly over the last five, six years, uh, with the advent of things like Dodd-Frank, MIFID II, AMIR. Um, a lot of them are struggling to, to, to uh, maintain and develop these systems that they've built for these things. And as it's a non-core activity, uh, we're seeing more and more uh, financial service industry um, participants looking to outsource or go to a SaaS model um, away from the traditional build and, and run it themselves. Um, it allows them to concentrate more on their own, their own bi uh, business of banking. Separately to that, of course, if you move to that sort of a model with a market infrastructure or market supplier, the cost should be reduced because the, the support and the maintenance development should be shared among the members rather than just having one member uh, bear the whole cost themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, in the recent surveys that, that um, CGI undertake every year, a large proportion of the banks said they were looking at other models, um, particularly for non-core business, and outsourcing and SaaS was one of the areas they were concentrating on. So I see the market moving that way, particularly for things like the SaaS model um, for regulatory reporting, as I said before. Um, it's a large cost, non-core uh, business. It's not a, a differentiator in any way for them. Um, the only downside for that is, is the reduction in the accountability that they have. Well, they still remain accountable, but the, uh, the responsibility for maintaining and running that is reduced by them, and therefore there's an, there's an area of, of compliance risk that they're adapting and taking in that. So when they're looking at cost reduction, they need to look at that risk as, as part of the offset. All right, and do you see the need for assurance of compliance as a requirement for the market? Yes, certainly. I mean, as that, com that compliance risk increases because the responsibility is being handed over to a third party, <clears throat> I believe the, the people who are looking at the SaaS models would want some form of assurance that the, the SaaS supplier is being compliant. Um, so I see some of the firms out there who are providing some sort of an assessment and uh, an audit um, will become more widespread and that whole service will become more widespread. Certainly as the regulators uh, very much uh, will not provide advice and guidance, they will simply say you're not breaking any problems at the moment. Mm -hmm. So there's no assurance from them that you'll, you'll continue to be compliant, but having these sort of audits and assessments on a regular basis can provide that sort of uh, benefits to them. So I think that goes in hand in hand with the SAS models. That's